Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about buying fabrics online because I know that's something that a lot of people can get nervous or apprehensive about. Especially considering how expensive fabric can be, I can understand wanting to actually be able to feel and touch the fabric before you actually buy it. Regardless, my advice is to just do it. It's 2020 and buying fabric online has become so convenient and there are so many reliable sources out there. There's even places that'll offer you swatches before you buy any actual yardage of fabric. That way you can see your fabric and touch your fabric before making any bigger purchases. I'm more of a gambler and an impulse buyer, so I typically don't pick up swatches because by the time that I wanted a fabric, I wanted it yesterday and I don't have time to wait for a swatch to come in the mail. But nonetheless, it is still a really great option if you want to see the fabric in person first. I tend to just take my chances with about two to three yards of fabric and I'm usually not disappointed. My first tip for shopping online for fabrics is to first know your fabrics. Start to familiarize yourself with different types of fabric and it's even helpful to keep a binder for reference. If you keep a stash of swatches, that could also help you remember fabrics that you've bought in the past and maybe you want to buy more of that same type of fabric and then you can always go to your swatch collection and be able to feel that fabric and see it again before you make a purchase in either another color or maybe another print. In my fabric swatch binder, I like to list where I got my fabrics from as well as the fabric content if I can actually remember it. Usually by the time that I get the fabric in the mail or I get it home from the store, I have absolutely no idea what I bought anymore. I don't have the receipt, I just know that I liked it and then I just have this blank slate of memory of what I even bought. It really helps to write down what your fabrics are right when you get them and then also keep a small swatch of it that way you can feel it and use it as reference later on. And if you are more new to fabric buying in general and you don't have this background knowledge of the different types of fabrics, you can still buy fabric online, you can request swatches, or you can choose a website that has a great return policy. That way, if you don't like what you've ordered, you'll be able to just send it back. The three basic elements to check for on fabric are its contents, weight, and width. The fabric content is going to tell you what the fabric is made out of. This could be cotton, knit, polyester, rayon. There's a variety of fabric types out there, so that is the first thing that I like to look at when I'm shopping online. Next, the weight of the fabric will tell you how heavy it is. This can range anywhere from heavy weight that you would be using for things like home decor projects or upholstery, and then very lightweight would be something that you might use for a dress or lightweight blouses for the summertime. It really depends on what you're going for, and even some websites will tell you that a particular fabric is meant to be used for home decor or it might be used for active wear. So a lot of websites will break that down for you in the descriptions as well. The last element to look for on fabrics is its width. Fabric widths can range anywhere between, it would say 35 inches to 108 inches. So make sure to check the width before you purchase it. That way you can check and see if you have enough fabric there to make your project or if you're going to need to buy additional yardage. After knowing your fabrics and the fabric content, my second tip is going to be to double check how much fabric you're actually buying. Some websites will list fabric by the yard, but there's other websites such as Etsy that I've seen where they will list fabrics by the half yard or sometimes even quarter yard. That way that they can show a cheaper listing price when you're scrolling through the searches. So you may come across something on Etsy that says it's only $5 and then when you go to click into it, it's really just $5 for a swatch of that fabric. And then potentially it could be $20 per yard. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're shopping online is to really, really double check how much yardage that you're buying and to make sure that you get the amount that you need. Finding listings by the half yard can be convenient if you don't need say like two full yards for a project, you maybe only need a yard and a half. You could buy three half yards of the fabric. Overall though, I think it's just a marketing attempt to make the fabric seem cheaper than it really is and I'm not a super big fan of it. Tip number three is to check your shipping options. There's been a lot of websites that I found where I absolutely love the fabric and then I take a look at the shipping and since it's international, the shipping is really, really high or they don't even ship to my country. So that is something to verify first before you start adding items to your cart and going to check out. On some websites, if you meet a certain dollar threshold, you qualify for free shipping. Or if you're buying from places like Amazon and have a Prime membership, you can get free shipping that way too. So I'll tend to buy fabric in batches. 
That way, if it's a $50 threshold to get free shipping, then I can easily meet my $50 and not have to pay for shipping on that one order instead of ordering fabric multiple times and having to pay for shipping each time. Something to think about. Now, from my experience with buying fabric on Amazon, just because it says it's prime does not mean you're gonna get it in two days. I've had orders come the next day and I've had orders delayed up to two months. So if you have a really tight deadline, just keep that in mind that the fabric stores don't necessarily stick to the two-day shipping. Other than the occasional shipping delay from Amazon, I've had really good luck with finding fabrics on there. So it's definitely a place to check out. It's generally not cheaper than getting it at other websites. Another thing that I like to do is check the reviews and especially see if there's any customer images. I always trust the customer images more than just the static flat picture of the fabric that the companies create. So I like looking at those when I have that opportunity. You can usually tell if a fabric has been well received or not based on these reviews. I do like seeing what other people have done with that type of fabric or their opinions of the fabric once they got it in the mail. Another place that you can find reviews is through sewing blogs and also on Instagram. There are tons of wonderful bloggers out there who post links to their favorite fabrics. That way you can go shop those same fabrics or find something similar to it. That is how I found this floral rayon chalice fabric. I follow Emily Hallman Designs on Instagram and she is just absolutely amazing and I love her work. And she posted this fabric on her Instagram and I thought it was so beautiful and wanted to get some for myself. My final tip before you buy fabric online is to do a web search and type in the type of fabric that you wanna buy and what you wanna make out of it. That way you can see if what you're buying really correlates to your project. So for example, if you type in to Google Jersey knit dress, You'll have a ton of examples of dresses that come up that you can use as reference or you know that that type of fabric is going to be good for that project. As a comparison, if you type in jersey knit tote bag, there's not going to be a lot of options that come up in Google Images. You're not going to really find anything. So it'll show you that that type of fabric wasn't necessarily meant for that kind of project. And if I don't know what to use with it, like if I have never heard of jersey knit before, Sometimes I would just type in jersey knit pants and just see what comes up and see if that's something that people generally use this fabric for or if I'm going completely into the deep end in the wrong direction. All right, that wraps up my tips for buying fabrics online. I have been buying the majority of my fabric online lately, especially with all that's been going on in the world and I've absolutely loved the convenience of it. Part of the reason I've been buying so much online is because I don't live near a fabric store anymore. I used to have one that was just a block away, but that was a bad temptation. I've been getting better about buying less fabric and using more of my stash, but I have really enjoyed being able to browse online and see what's really out there. You get to see a lot more variety when you go to different websites rather than just revisiting the same fabric store each time. Well, that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful and enjoyed it. If you want to see more sewing videos like this in the future, you can subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye!